HD Smartcast. You are listening to an HD Smartcast original. Welcome to She Diaries, an exclusive podcast series for women entrepreneurs. Brought to you by SheAtWork.com, a one-stop knowledge hub for women entrepreneurs. This podcast is an HD Smartcast original and is available on HDSmartcast.com. India's fastest growing podcast producing platform. Through She Diaries, the She at Work team will bring to you meaningful conversations on women empowerment and entrepreneurship with a view to educate, support and motivate women entrepreneurs around the world. Hello everyone. I am Ruby Sena, founder She at Work, and with me on this podcast today is Ms. Nupur Chunjunwala. monitoring evaluation and partnerships lead at un women india nupur has over 15 years of experience leading multicultural teams spanning across diverse geographies her expertise has directly impacted national and global goals for women empowerment and entrepreneurship she has been able to address the needs of diverse entrepreneurs ranging from enterprises run by women to indigenous groups to artisans hi nupur welcome to she diaries Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, Nupur, in light of your years of experience of working with women globally, let's first start off by asking about your views on women empowerment. What's been your experience? You know, women empowerment is absolutely critical for gender equality. Without it, we can't achieve gender equality. Having said that, we must be cognizant of the fact that this is a very important year for us it marks 25 years to the beijing platform for action which really is the first time where the world came together to commit to gender equality and women empowerment um it's the first time that we actually vocalized and accepted that women rights are human rights and human rights are women rights having said that over the, you know we still have a large gender gap in the world one in 3 women continue to experience physical or sexual violence in their lifetime on an average 137 women are killed by a member of their own family every day um 18 countries in 18 countries husbands can legally prevent their wives from working and 39 countries daughters and uh, sons don't have equal inheritance rights so on an average you know women on 20% less than their male counterparts only 6% of women actually make it to their executive role so you know we have made a lot of progress but the point is that there's still so much to go there is not a single country in the world that can claim to be gender equal today yeah we are making steps forward but it's slow and we really need to accelerate it because the next generation is the generation of equality and that's what they demand and we should be enabling that and snupur those are those are really grim uh, figures that you are uh, portraying for us so in this scenario how important do you feel is the role of uh, various stakeholders in creating a robust ecosystem for women entrepreneurs absolutely critical you know india for example is a legislatively very pro- progressive state but our gender stereotypes are so deeply ingrained in our being and and normalized every day that it's really about that behavioral change right and it can't just be that you and me working in you know in our little silos can this happen we must work together collectively um whether it's for women or women entrepreneurs you know recently um there have been a number of studies of the impact of covid on uh, women owned enterprises and a recent study by us as well by un women um has highlighted that women are asking for this holistic approach they need access to finance to investment to you know contract opportunities business training mentorship networking these are very critical for them um and unfortunately we are seeing a lot of gap within the ecosystem so if you look at the financial structure right um a recent ifc report from uh earlier this year says that female startups or any organization that has at least one female founder is likely to get disproportionately small amount of global venture fund um 
in 2018 it was reported that only 11 percent of seed funding and five percent of late stage venture funding went to in emerging markets went to women and this is a bit scary right because we know from experience and from lot of studies that women actually are more prudent with money and tend to create better profit and return on investment um then if you look at like global procurement right public procurement spending is generally 15 to 30 percent of gdp of a country and yet only one percent of procurement contracts go to women you know so yet we know that 34 percent of companies that have diversified supply chains actually create positive impact on their profitability in fact in 2014 AT&T attributed about 4 billion of their revenue uh, to engagement with women suppliers so this is you know it's not that you want to do gen- women empowerment or work with women entrepreneurs because it's a feel good thing it actually makes good business sense and that's why the entire ecosystem needs to work whether it's your investors your venture capitalists, your angel investors, or your accelerators and incubators that are helping these organizations, whether it is the banking system, like, you know, you have the Jam Trinity, you have the Mudra loans that the government is promoting. But when you go down to the ground, right, like the manager will still require extra documentation from a woman. So recently we had a case where these two founders of a women run enterprise, they owned the land. They, the business was in their name, um, but they, they wanted a loan for COVID expansion, right? And to deal with COVID. And they went to the bank for the loan under the Atmanirbhar Bharat scheme. And turns out that the manager refused to give them the loan without the husband's NOC. And this is not a requirement, right? The husband himself was just like, this is not my land. This is not my business. For what am I giving an NOC? So it's really not about just addressing the gaps in terms of working with one it has to be an ecosystem approach where we work with multiple people across the board with various stakeholder groups and bridge those gaps and the gaps are often soft it's informational it's biases it's lack of access um you know We are seeing that more and more investors are actually interested in diversifying their portfolios and they're looking for women to invest in. And yet when you talk to women who are running businesses, they will say that, you know, an investor is not interested in our ideas because they don't think it's commercially viable, which is also not the truth. So we are working towards bridging these gaps as well to enable a woman to better pitch for an investor. We also see biases where, you know, I've had a VC, a lead VC, a woman VC tell us that some of the males come and like pitch stories. They won't look at me in my eye, right? Even though I'm the decision maker, they look at to look at my colleagues who are junior to me, who may be men and talk to them because they don't think I'm in that decision making role, which is very unfortunate, right? And this is not, we're not talking about a, a sort of unexposed community of people we would expect that these biases won't exist but they run deep across strata of society so that's one of the things that is really required when we're looking at an ecosystem approach what you're saying is right it's the inherent uh, mental bias that's the bigger problem and what you're talking about you know women's economic empowerment that's very important we all know you know, women's economic empowerment plays a key role in achieving gender equality and it significantly contributes to the overall economy also. So, in this uh, in this perspective, what are some of the initiatives taken by UN Women to help women achieve economic empowerment, especially in terms of women entrepreneurship in India? Lighten our listeners. Yeah, so there are a lot of studies that have shown, in fact, uh, a McKinsey Global Institute study says that 12 trillion uh, dollars can be added to the global economy by 2025 by advancing women's equality. You know, when we are in this downturn, it's absolutely necessary that as we're building back better, women become a part of that recovery and are not further marginalized. Um, At UN Women, we work at intersectionalities. We work across areas of women economic empowerment where we look 
at it from a holistic perspective it's not just about skills training it's also ad- about addressing issues of violence it is also about the mentoring and the leadership role that organizations can take it's also about enabling the behavioral change and breaking those stereotypes so we have a few programs which are quite strong that you can look you know that we're working on um globally un women and the global compact network have come up with the seven uh, women empowerment principles and those principles are really guidelines or a framework for an organization to become gender equal and it ranges from you know how do you get diversity in your workforce how do you create more equal supply chains to the way you're designing your products are you dealing with safety it's really that guideline and we're working very closely with the private sector on adopting these principles and we have many leading organizations that have actually signed up for them in india ranging from biocon we have tata power cap gemini you know to name a few so it's just it's a wide range of organizations that we're working on we also have a program called the second chance education program where we work on the more rural enterprises we're working with women in rural india across four states where they have traditionally dropped out of the educational system for various social reasons right it could be an early marriage it could be lack of resources and now they want to get back into the workforce so we are working with them to complete their education to skill them and also help build micro enterprises and recently with sbi and the world bank we announced a scheme for women livelihoods where we have started seeing that a lot of women are transitioning from you know the self help groups to scale into individual enterprises that require that 10 lakh rupee loan so a special scheme that will give competitive interest rate based loans for these women who can grow their their businesses uh, which is very very critical because it's a missing middle right now more in terms of the other formal enterprises we have an investor consortium along with our sister agency UNDP and the niti ayog where we have um the consortium comprises of investors who invest in various stages from angel to vc to debt funding where we actually work with cohorts of women train them provide them with the tools to actually make pitches to the investors and make successful pitches and you know we we've been doing this for almost a little over a year now and we are already seeing great results in this because there are some of our cohort members who've reached advanced stages of negotiation for funding and then we have like you know some innovative stuff we are doing like the industry disruptor challenge we recently had and we hosted a shri shakti challenge with um meti um the government of india where we are looking at women to innovate and find solutions through challenges that are put towards them so in our industry disruptor challenge it was really focused on sustainable fashion and there we created the linkage between the entrepreneurs women entrepreneurs and uh, industry so the h&ms and the shibos of the world were part of that training and it's really interesting uh, there ruby is that h&m is actually working with a large percentage of those women entrepreneurs and their feedback to us was that you know some of these solutions we've been struggling with for many years now and i we finally have a solution and we didn't realize there's so much innovation out there because it almost seems like they were blindsided by the major suppliers and perspectives that they're working with so they didn't even think that women could bring that entrepreneurial action you know it's critical that we work on mixed sort of an intersectional innovative approach in the in what we do so where yeah. we work with women we also deal with how they may be dealing with violence or yeah. how they are dealing with their you know household burden so it yeah. really is a multi sectoral approach that we take in our work that's great that's great because two things that really attracted my attention while you were talking because i represent i am myself and women entrepreneur and i'm a part of she at work i founded this platform because i felt most women are not aware of the funding opportunities that are available for women entrepreneurs 
most of them are not aware about how to go and pitch for the businesses and and i'm not talking only of the tier 1 cities i'm primarily talking about the tier 2 cities of india mm. and the women we need to bring forward and it's great that you're talking about you know reaching out to them and teaching them how to avail the best opportunities even how to pitch their product in investor pitches so that's a great initiative and i think many women entrepreneurs uh, can look forward to improving their businesses and bringing them into a larger scale through this no absolutely like we we've seen in the past where some investors have asked women entrepreneurs are you married or are you having children are you planning to have children like this is something they will never ask a man right it's inappropriate and irrelevant but they will justify it saying it's a risk i know a leading investor who said look i don't want to work with a woman entrepreneur because when i do reviews with them and if i lose my temper she'll cry and i'm just like they, these kind of biases are too deep right this is not a reason not to give somebody who's a good investment money because you can't control your temper but you know, these are realities that we we work with to sort of change and hopefully it will with the kind of interventions we are having what you seeing and from an investor point of view when you think about it nupur if i am an investor and i am investing in a startup and a woman is supposedly getting pregnant there are a lot of chances especially in india that she'll you know take a back seat for some time where i think right now uh, in the current scenario with the new work from home you know reality that is coming across this with this coming across do you feel with work from home becoming a new normal in the post covid world there'll be a growth of women entrepreneurship because now you don't need to physically go to an office every time you need to do something women can sit at home and run their businesses and people like investors will become aware that it's about the scalability of the business that's important it's about things like that rather than whether you're planning to have a baby or not so i think it's a double edged sword right because it has provided work from home and the use of technology has provided a lot of opportunities for women to join the workforce and scale business at the same time you know our recent study have said that women owned businesses are facing a coordination challenge because of this work from home because they don't have the technology know how or the processes in place almost 60% of our respondents in that study told us this the other thing that we are seeing is that almost 51% reported that household work has actually been affecting the productivity of their women employees and 17% had to quit because of this demand because the truth is kids are working from home right your okay. husband is probably working from home your parents are elderly and like even if you look at the way house setups happen right the woman doesn't get the priority in terms of where her laptop is placed for her to execute her work so we are facing a lot of challenges but you know interestingly on the flip side we saw that about 47% of the women entrepreneurs we we surveyed actually said that you know they are getting some sort of support from their social uh, support system whether it's friend family advisors mentors on how to run their business on the pandemic and yet the number of people who who actually reported that somebody is helping them share the burden of increased work was very minimal so you know we had this deep seated patriarchy or um in our society where it's okay for a woman to work but ghar ka kaam to wohi karegi you know and and that's a bit of a challenge but having said that i think there is an opportunity to change those perspectives as well right because i think we are seeing more and more home run businesses now get access to e-commerce and sell we are yes. seeing those businesses grow we are seeing women quickly adapt to that a lot of the e-commerce companies have actually told us that this has given them opportunity to hire women in second and third tier cities at much lower cost and higher productivity which otherwise they wouldn't have been able to do because they are able to use technology to deliver the back office operations as well of their business whether it's inventory management you know whether it's cataloging that range of thing and also we are seeing new distribution models that are coming in which women will sort of emerge so we need to be cognizant of the risks because we are also getting reports that there are new forms of violence and harassment that are emerging right there are stories of managers asking their female employees to log in at 11 at night 
turn on their video commenting on things right that kind of pressure is happening so i think since this is all new we need to develop those protocols in place as well those complexities will resolve but it's a great opportunity for women who have been dropping out of the ecosystem you know because they were going to have a baby or they were going to get married to now come back into the workforce from working from home yeah so you know i think uh, personally i feel and the other day we were having a discussion that it's mo- now becoming more about work life integration rather than work life balance right to integrate work into your life and life into your work and uh, in this context i mean when you were talking there were two things i noticed you know the top two or three challenges you know is a quick last minute you know this thing what do you feel yeah. biggest challenges for women uh, entrepreneurs do you feel it's technology do you feel it's the family mindset or this top of the mind what do you feel i felt you were talking about technology and supportive family so i think it's clearly that women are asking for more support in terms of market linkages and technology this we know multiple studies have told us our recent study also highlighted this they're struggling with you know their household chores and anybody likes more help but they want to grow their business Oh, okay. they are committed to it right 75% reported that looking for new business opportunities great to actually grow it so to me that gives me hope that yeah. we need to enable that women are not giving up and saying oh you know what forget it it's not worth it they still committed and we should empower that and you know going back to our discussion on the ecosystem that becomes a great opportunity right like we are all adapting to a new normal and that new normal gives us an opportunity to jump start whether it's technology linkage for work from home whether it's e supply chains whether it is an e-commerce setup whether it's mentoring there are many ways to do it but yeah. we need to create that ena- enabling environment yeah what you're saying is right that environment has to be created for women to come out of the of the shell and they're great multitaskers so i think being entrepreneurs or running their own businesses is something that they can do easily with the right support as a as a finishing note uh, uh, nupur if you had to give uh, you know one advice to women entrepreneurs or professionals who are running their own businesses across the group based on uh, across the globe based on your personal journey what is it that one advice that you would like to give a woman stand up speak up you know you don't have to accept the reality that the world is giving you if you are not comfortable with something speak up and ask if you want help at home ask for it and don't hold yourself accountable at such high levels it is okay if a child doesn't sleep at the same time and is delayed by 10 minutes once in a while it is okay yeah. if the laundry is not perfectly folded you know it's it we as women and i am guilty of it as often as well is that we're so stressed about make, making sure that all the balls that we are juggling are perfect we feel we are super humans and we we expect that and it's okay and you know if somebody speaks inappropriately to you it's all right to speak up to them and to demand action right unless we do it together collectively we are not going to make progress and it's not just about our onus of this happening that we must do it always but we shouldn't be feeling guilty about doing it is the point we we must continue moving towards this together and you're not alone right we are there are a lot of us around and we need to find those support systems and those mentors and there are mentors on all sides of the world right it's no longer a fight where a girl fights for a girl there are many he for she champions and lots of leaders who are looking to support you so stand up and speak up that that would be my advice and don't give up like it is difficult but it will get better just just keep at it you you are doing well and it'll it'll get better so those were nice finishing words uh, nupur stand up speak up don't give up don't have guilt complex about everything so great i think this is something that all our women entrepreneurs will remember and thanks for taking our time for this podcast nupur we look forward to having you again thank you so much for having me thanks a lot thanks yeah
If you would like to feature on She Diaries, you can write to us at info at sheatwork.com. For more related content, visit our website, sheatwork.com, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. To give us your feedback, reach out to us at HD Smartcast. We're present on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To listen to more podcasts, log on to hdsmartcast.com or suno naye nazariye se. This was an HD Smartcast original. HD Smartcast.